Hello everyone, and welcome to Imagine Verse. So we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto had the bloodline of Time Sage. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content. Let's start the story. Good morning class, welcome to what will hopefully be your final day as a student here in the academy, called a scar-faced chunin instructor, standing in the front of the room. As you are all aware, Today is the graduation exam and should you pass, you will be honored with the privilege of becoming one of this village's fine shinobi. Now, the graduation exam is divided into five parts. First there is a written portion of the test, then a taijutsu portion, physical portion, a weapons portion, and finally a ninjutsu portion, explained the instructor. Okay. I can definitely do this. I'll pass this time for sure and then I'll be one step closer to becoming Hokage, T.T. Ibeo thought an excited blonde-haired student wearing an almost blinding orange jumpsuit. First up was the written portion of the exam. When instructed the blonde turned over the papers and began reading through the questions. First question. Name three of the village's four Hokages. This will be easy. Let's see, there's the Shodam Hokage, Senju Hashirama. Then there's the Naidame, Senju Tobarama. And let's not forget Gigi, thought the blonde as he wrote down the answer to the first question. Second question, what is chakra? The blonde wrote down what would been an incomplete, yet acceptable answer for the questions and went on to answer the remaining eight questions before time was up. Confident that he had aced the written portion, the blonde scribbled his name, Uzumaki Naruto, atop the paper and handed it to the white-haired instructor at the front of the room and left to head outside for the weapons, taijutsu, and physical portions. Unbeknownst to everyone, as they had all left, the white-haired man made a quick hand sign and the questions on Naruto's test suddenly rearranged themselves, the answers remaining where they were originally. A sinister grin plastered his face and thanks to a simple genjutsu he had placed on the blonde student's test, Naruto had just bombed the written portion of the graduation test. Outside, the students were given the taijutsu portion of the test. For this, they had to last at least three minutes in a spar against one of the instructors any longer and they would earn a few bonus points. Students' names were called and one by one, each student sparred against the white-haired instructor. Some students, such as Inazuka Kiba and even Hayuga Hanada did rather well in the taijutsu portion as they both came from clans where taijutsu was heavily emphasized. There was even a raven-haired student, who managed to last five minutes, the most anyone could achieve. This student was Uchiha Sasuke, the prodigy and current top of the class. Others, like Aburame Shino and Nara Shikamaru barely passed. The Aburame clan's styles disregarded most taijutsu and Shikamaru really didn't care all that much. He found this whole test troublesome. Finally, my turn. I'm going to last a whole five minutes against Mizuki Sensei and stick it to that Tamiz face that I can do just as good as him, if not better. T.T. Ibeo, exclaimed Naruto. As Naruto stepped into the sparring ring, Masuki's face hardened and he sent a barrage of attacks at Naruto. What the hell? He's moving much faster and hitting much harder than he did against any of the other students, thought Naruto as he just barely dodged a punch intended to knock a few teeth out. The bell at the three minute mark rang before Naruto received a strong kick in the stomach, sending him flying into a nearby tree. Naruto had just barely passed the taijutsu portion, but nearly lost his breakfast. Mizuki growled underneath his breath but still wasn't too worried. Naruto's score on the taijutsu portion was nowhere near enough to balance out the big fat, zero, he received on the written portion. Third was the physical test in which students were instructed to perform a number of physical exercises to test their physical dexterity and conditioning. Naruto was up and was currently on an exercise where he had to jump across the top of logs to traverse a gap. Landing on top of one of the large posts, Naruto spied his next target and made a leap for that log only to fall straight through the wood and land flat on his ass. What the hell? There was a log there, shouted Naruto. Most of the students just laughed at his slip up and frustration while Aruka sighed and put a low score underneath Naruto's name for not completing the obstacle course. Once again, the white-haired Chunin grinned, having tricked Naruto yet again with a genjutsu. The weapons portion followed and Naruto was handed 10 kanai and 10 shuriken and instructed to his as many targets as possible. Stepping up to the line, Naruto grabbed his first kanai and threw it at the target. However, about halfway to the target, it fell to the ground like a rock. Naruto just stared in shock and quickly grabbed his next kanai, 
adjusting his aim and throwing it. This time, the kanai sailed clear over the target. The remaining kanai and shuriken were not much different, with just a few hitting the target, just barely enough for a passing mark. And for the third time today, a big grin lit up on Mizuki's face. Weren't gravity seals just wonderful? He didn't want Naruto to completely bomb the exam. He wanted the blonde to just barely fail so that he could manipulate him that much easier. The last thing you'll all need to is come into the next room and perform the bunch and no jutsu, clone jutsu, Iruka announced. No. Not that one. That's my worst skill. Panicked Naruto in the back of the classroom. As his name was called, Naruto entered the room and attempted to perform the bunshin no jutsu. A large puff of smoke filled the room and as the smoke cleared, a dead and pathetic looking clone collapsed next to Naruto. The blonde and Aruka both exchanged an irritated look before Aruka used his own jutsu, the big head no jutsu. You fail. Later that afternoon, a depressed Naruto sat alone on the swing outside the academy as he watched all the parents come to congratulate their children on passing. Everyone just ignored him just like they have been doing since Naruto could remember. He didn't know why everyone hated him and shunned him. Hey that kid, whispered one of the parents to another. Yeah, that's, the kid, and he's also the only one who failed, spoke the other parent. Well that's a good thing, he shouldn't become a shinobi, since he's. Shish, we're not supposed to talk about that, the second parent said, hushing the first. As Naruto dragged himself back to his home, he was encountered by Mizuki sensei. Minutes later, the student and sensei found themselves sitting on the balcony that extended from the apartment Naruto had been given by the Hokage ever since he was kicked out of the orphanage at the age of six. Iruka sensei's a serious person. His parents were killed when he was young and he had to take care of things himself, spoke Mizuki, trying to explain why exactly Iruka had failed Naruto. But why does he pick on only me? Asked Naruto, he probably sees himself in you. He wants to see you become strong the real way. Try to understand Aruka sensei's feelings. Since you also have no parents, said Mizuki. However, Mizuki's comment only seemed to drag the blonde down as Naruto was reminded by the harsh truth that he had no parents nor was he aware of their identities. All he would wish for was a name, something to let him know that his parents were good people and that he wasn't some demon spawn, as some villagers put it. I'll tell you what. I'll let you in on a little secret. It was late at night and the entire village of Konohagakure no Sado was fast asleep, except for one Uzumaki Naruto. The blonde troublemaker was currently sneaking into the house of the very man who ran this village and everything was going fine until. What are you doing in my house at this hour? Asked Serutobi Hirazan, the Sandame Hokage as he encountered Naruto sneaking through his own home. What? Exclaimed a startled Naruto before acting on impulse. Oirope no Jutsu. Standing in front of the Hokage was a sexy, young, busty, and incredibly naked young woman with very thin wisps of smoke struggling to cover the young beauty's private areas. Upon taking one look at this formidable, and incredibly sexy woman, the Hokage found himself defeated and passed out with gushers of blood spewing from his nose. All right, I found it, exclaimed Naruto as he sifted through numerous scrolls inside the Hokage's home, before coming to one labeled, Forbidden Scroll of Sealing. With that, he dashed out of the house and into the woods with one of the village's most prized scrolls on his back. About two hours later, Naruto was sitting in the woods, panting and dirtied. I've found you! exclaimed Iruka as he jumped down from a tree in front of Naruto. What the hell are you doing out here? Hee <laughs> hee, you found me. I've only learned one thing, grinned Naruto as he rubbed the back of his head. You look all beaten up, what were you doing here? asked Iruka. Never mind that, hey hey, exclaimed Naruto as he began bouncing up and down. I'm going to try an incredible jutsu now. If I do, you'll let me graduate. At least that's what Mizuki sensei said. Oh, and he also told me about this scroll and the special test for graduating. Mizuki, said Iruka. However, before he could continue with his thoughts, Iruka reacted suddenly and pushed Naruto to the side before getting pelted with a barrage of kanai. Nice job finding the moron called out a voice from up in the trees. I see, so that's what's going on, growled an injured Aruka with numerous kanai sticking out of his arms and legs. Naruto, give me the scroll, ordered the newly arriving Mizuki. Huh? What? What's going on here? asked a confused and frantic Naruto. Naruto. Whatever you do, don't give him that scroll, 
shouted Aruka. That's a dangerous scroll that has forbidden jutsu inside it. Mizuki used you to get his hands on it. Naruto, there's no point in you having it. How about I tell you a little secret that's been kept for 12 years? One that everyone knows except you, grinned Mizuki. As soon as Aruka heard Mizuki open his mouth, he knew what the white haired Chunin trader was going to say and began to protest. Twelve years ago, you know about the Kyubi no Kitsune being sealed, right? However, the truth is that you were in fact the nine tailed demon fox. W. What? stuttered Naruto as his entire mind was blown away by that revelation. What do you mean? Didn't you find it odd how everyone hates you? Aruka is the same, he also hates you, taunted Mizuki as some anger flared up in Naruto. Reaching to his back, Mizuki grabbed the large shuriken and threw it at Naruto. Still frozen by the truth, Naruto stood there helplessly. However, before the shuriken could kill him, Naruto looked up to see that Aruka had actually taken the shuriken in the back, using his own body as a shield to protect Naruto. W.Y. My parents, after they died there was nobody to compliment or acknowledge me, I always acted like an idiot just to get people's attention. Since I wasn't good at learning, it was better than being nothing so I continued to act like an idiot, explained Aruka before he began to tear up. It was so painful, Naruto, you also must have also been in a lot of pain. I'm sorry Naruto, if I had done a better job, you wouldn't have to feel like this. Immediately after Aruka's speech, Naruto bolted off into the woods and Mizuki just laughed. Naruto isn't the type to have a change of heart, and I think he's planning on using the scroll to get revenge. You saw those eyes earlier, the eyes of a real demon. Naruto, isn't like that, exclaimed Uruka as he fought through the pain and rose to his feet slowly, but Mizuki was already in pursuit of Naruto. Naruto, Uruka shouted as he chased after the blonde. Hurry, give me the scroll. Mizuki is after you. To Uruka's surprise, Naruto slammed into the scar faced Chunin, sending him flying to the ground. Why, Naruto? grunted Aruka before he transformed back into Mizuki. How did you know I wasn't Aruka? Naruto just grinned before transforming as well. Where Naruto once was, now stood a weary Aruka. Hee hee, you'd even transform into, what killed your parents to protect him, grinned Mizuki. I won't hand over the scroll to someone like you, fought Aruka. If you use the skills in that scroll, you can do whatever you want, declared Mizuki. There's no way that Demon Fox wouldn't try to use the power of the scroll. Yeah, the Demon Fox would do that, but Naruto's different. I'll acknowledge his as one of my excellent students. He may not be the hardest worker and he's clumsy and no one accepts him. He already knows what it's like to feel pain inside your heart. He isn't the Demon Fox. He's a member of the Hidden Leaf. He is Uzumaki Naruto. Sitting behind a tree, Naruto was failing to fight back the tears as he listened to Uruka Sensei's declaration. Back with Mizuki and Aruka, Mizuki grinned and reached for the second shuriken on his back. Fine, whatever. Just die. With that, Mizuki prepared to throw the shuriken, but was tackled before he even had a chance to do such. Naruto. Asked an amazed Aruka. You shouldn't have done that, brat, growled Mizuki. If you ever touch Aruka sensei, I'll kill you, declared Naruto. Ha. Huh. I'll kill someone like you in one shot, laughed Mizuki. Try it trash. I'll return the pain a thousand times over. Then do it, Demon Fox, Mizuki egged, Taiju Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. With those words, the forest was filled with 1,000 solid Naruto clones. The now panicking Mizuki could only whimper as he felt the wrath of 1,000 pissed off Naruto clones. Each one was a real body and not an illusion, thought Aruka. Maybe he will surpass all the previous Hokages. Oops. I think I went a little overboard there, grinned Naruto. Naruto, come over here. There's something I want to give you, said Aruka. Moments later, Naruto opened his eyes to see Aruka smiling at him, only Aruka was missing his Hite 8. Said Hite 8 was now tied to Naruto's head. Congratulations, on graduating. Beep. 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 A loud alarm rang through the apartment of Uzumaki Naruto and the blonde began to stir. Man that was a weird dream said Naruto to no one in particular. It's like Mizuki sensei wanted me to fail the genin test and then tricks me into stealing some scroll which I learned some sort of cool clone jutsu from. Oh well, it was just a dream, right? 
Time to go ace that graduation test and get that much closer to becoming Hokage, T.T. Ibeo. With that, Uzumaki Naruto took off to begin his day, completely unaware of just what had awoken from its ages old slumber. It was early morning throughout Konohagakir no Sado, the village hidden in the leaves. For many members of this village, today was an exciting day. Today was the day where many fresh young students would be graduating from the Shinobi Academy and joining the village's ranks as genin. One such student, an orange-clad Uzumaki Naruto, was super excited to becoming a full-fledged ninja and putting himself one step closer to realizing his dream, becoming Hokage. Still, one thought hung in the back of his head, a thought he just couldn't dismiss for whatever reason. That was actually kind of a strange dream, thought the blonde. Last night's dream regarding him failing the graduation test, only to be offered a fake makeup test by Mizuki Sensei and be tricked into stealing some forbidden scroll didn't feel like a dream for some odd reason. Oh well, there's no way I'm going to fail because I'm going to be Hokage one day, T.T. Ibeo. Naruto arrived at the academy and took a seat amongst a table in the back of the classroom, next to a napping student with pineapple-like hair. Sitting next to him was a larger kid who was munching on a bag of chips. Naruto knew these two as Narashikamaru and Akamichi Choji, two of the kids in his class that he actually got along well with. Before much else happened, the class teacher, a chunin by the name of Amino Uruka, entered the room and took his place at the podium, taking a quick glance to ensure that his lectern hadn't been booby-trapped by a certain blonde-haired prankster. Seeing that it was safe today, Aruka began the introduction speech to the graduation exam. Good morning class, welcome to what will hopefully be your final day as a student here in the academy. As you are all aware, today is the graduation exam and should you pass, you will be honored with the privilege of becoming one of this village's fine shinobi, Aruka explained. Normally, Naruto would have disregarded Aruka's speech, but for some bizarre reason, the words out of Aruka's mouth were the exact same as those from his dream the previous night. Now, the graduation exam is divided into five parts. First there is a written portion of the test, then a taijutsu portion, physical portion, weapons portion, and finally a ninjutsu portion. Weird. That's exactly what Aruka sensei said in my dream, thought Naruto. Passing it off as a mere coincidence, Naruto waited excitedly for the test to be handed out. While he wasn't the brightest student in the class, he had actually studied the scrolls and materials diligently over the past few days hoping that he wouldn't repeat his failing performances like the past two exams. Naruto immediately turned over the test once it was handed to him and began going over the questions. First question, name three of the village's four Hokages. Hum. Just like in my dream, thought Naruto. Second question, what is chakra? Going through the remaining questions, he found that this was the exact same test as the one he had in his dream. Okay, now this is getting a little freaky. This is the exact same test. Naruto wanted to disregard the warning bells going off in his head, but they were too loud and he began to remember his dream more clearly. Wait, but if this is like the dream, then is Mizuki sensei actually trying to fail me? Now Naruto was torn. Did he answer the questions that were there as is or did he rely on the feeling in his gut and answer the questions based on the order that they appeared in his dream after Mizuki removed the genjutsu? Deciding to go with his gut, Naruto clearly remembered the order that the questions were actually in and wrote the answers where they would be when the genjutsu was released. Hesitantly, and hoping to Kami that his gut had told him the right thing, Naruto turned in his test to Mizuki before exiting the room and joining those who had completed the test outside. Mizuki took the test and before handing it to Aruka to be graded, dispelled the genjutsu. The questions on the test rearranged themselves, just as they had done in Naruto's dream. Mizuki grinned as he handed the test to Aruka, thinking he had just caused the blonde to flunk the written portion of the test. Aruka took Naruto's test and began to grade before setting his pen down after writing a single number on top of the paper. Wow, I'm impressed Naruto. You actually managed to ace that. Good job. Another 30 minutes passed and soon the instructors joined the students outside and Aruka passed out the results of the written portion of the test. To say Naruto was amazed with the 10 out of 10 for his written test was an understatement. It was more like he was mentally freaking out. He knew that based in the test he handed in his answers should have been wrong, but here was the perfect test with the questions in the same place that they had been, after the genjutsu was dispelled. The taijutsu test was next and the matches were called in the exact same order, and proceeded exactly as they had in his dream. The fact that Naruto could vividly remember the dream was an amazement in itself. 
but the fact that just about everything had happened and it was what really got him. Naruto's turn came and he stepped into the ring with Mizuki, who had a sinister smirk on his face. As soon as the timer started, Mizuki began to throw a series of rapid strikes, hoping to catch the blonde, demon brat, off balance and do some physical damage as well. But alas, Naruto somehow managed to avoid the most brutal of attacks and stay standing throughout the portion of the test. The three-minute bell rang, indicating that Naruto had passed, and realizing what was coming, Naruto rolled to the side and avoided the strong kick aimed at his gut. Normally, Naruto would keep going, determining to last all five minutes, but once he realized that Mizuki was actually trying to hurt him, Naruto called it at about 3.30, a passing mark and still better than half the class. Next was the physical test and as Naruto came to the log skip obstacle, he stopped atop one log, the same one he had jumped from just before passing through the Genjutsu log in his dream. By this point in time, Naruto had already decided that whatever had happened in his dream was actually happening now and that Mizuki really was trying to fail him. Well, there was no way Naruto was going to let that happen. Naruto skipped the Genjutsu log and landed safely atop the one after it. Had he looked at his white haired instructor, he would have seen the scowl on Mizuki's face. Naruto managed to successfully complete the obstacle course, doing better than most of the class. So far, Naruto had managed to pass three of the five exams and things were looking up for the genin hopeful. Now for the weapons portion. That's right. There are seals or something on these kanai that alter the flight. Just gotta remember what the kanai did in my dream and adjust, thought Naruto as his first kanai buried itself in the ground about halfway to the target. Let's see, the second one went high, so if I just aim a bit lower, Naruto adjusted his aim and threw the next kanai, which threw much lighter than it should have, but thanks to the adjustments, it landed on the target, earning a score of 7 tenths for that throw, not bad for a sabotaged kanai. The rest of the weapons test proceeded similar to that, Naruto earning a respectable and passing mark. All that remained was the jutsu portion. Unfortunately, Naruto knew just what jutsu was coming up. The last thing you'll all need to do is to come into the next room and perform the Bunshin no Jutsu, announced Iruka. However, the Bunshin no Jutsu was the last thing on Naruto's mind. What the hell is going on? It's like I already took this test. Then does that mean that everything else that happened in the dream was true? Even that thing Mizuki sensei said about? Uzumaki Naruto, please come in, called out Iruka from the room. Naruto was instantly broken out of his thought as he stepped into the room. Damn, it's the Bunshin. My worst jutsu, sighed Naruto. Iruka explained that Naruto was to make two clones and Naruto sighed before gathering chakra. This is it, I'll get it for sure, exclaimed Naruto. Bunshin no jutsu. A massive puff of smoke filled the room, clearing shortly after to reveal, a poorly formed and nearly dead clone. Everyone deadpanned. He was so close, sighed Iruka. Naruto, I'm sorry but you f. No wait Aruka sensei I can do it just give me one more chance please pleaded Naruto Aruka just shook his head as much as he really wanted to pass the blonde his clone was nowhere near good enough for a mark that would cause him to pass damn it what was that jutsu from my dream um um Naruto began to panic and tried to recall his dream more specifically the special clone jutsu that he managed to use he had seen and could remember clearly the instructions for the jutsu in his dreams and just how he used it. No please, cage bunshin no jutsu, exclaimed Naruto before a large puff of smoke filled the room. To say that Aruka and Mizuki were shocked upon seeing over a dozen solid Naruto clones was the understatement of the century. Naruto, gasped Aruka. Where did you learn that jutsu? Those are solid clones. Well um, Naruto was now trying to think up a reasonable explanation. I saw it in my dreams. That excuse was almost as bad as one of Hitaki Kakashi's, Aruka sweat dropped. Naruto, come with me. Where are we going, Aruka sensei? Asked Naruto. To see the Hokage, replied Aruka. Mizuki, could you finish up for me? Sure, Aruka, said Mizuki. Underneath his calm exterior, Mizuki was fuming. Now his genius scheme at getting Naruto to steal the forbidden scroll was ruined. Wait Aruka sensei, do I pass? asked Naruto. I, don't know Naruto, spoke Aruka hesitantly. He wanted to pass the blonde badly, but he had to consult with the Hokage first regarding Naruto using a Jonin-ranked Kinjutsu. Well, 
This certainly is interesting. How did Naruto get the cage Bunshin no Jutsu? Spoke the Sandame to no one in particular as he had just observed Naruto's stunt through his crystal ball. Moments later, a knock was heard on the door to his office and in stepped Aruka in the very center of his attention. Sandame Sama, bowed Aruka. Please excuse me, but I was just giving Naruto his graduation test when he performed a Jonin level Kinjutsu. Yes, I know Aruka, said the Hokage as he took a breath of smoke from his pipe. Now Naruto kun, would you mind explaining to me how you came across the cage Bunshin no Jutsu? Naruto told the Hokage and Aruka about his dream, Sarutobi Hirazan listening intently while Aruka thought Naruto was just making up some silly excuse. And then Mizuki told me that I have, said Naruto before pausing. Gigi, am I really the Kyubi no Kitsune? That immediately captured Hirazan's full undivided attention and the room was filled with a heavy silence. It was at that point that the Hokage realized there was more to this, dream, of Naruto's. I see, sighed Naruto, the silence answering his question. Naruto, while it is true that the Kyubi no Kitsune is sealed within you, that does not make you the fox himself, spoke Hirazan before reaching into his desk and pulling out a scroll and a kanai. Now you see this kanai? This is the Kyubi. You are this scroll. The Hokage proceeded to seal the kanai within the scroll. Now, is this scroll that I sealed the kanai within the kanai? No, I guess not, said Naruto, letting out a sigh of relief. Aruka sensei. Naruto looked over towards his sensei for something. Naruto, I'm sorry, said Aruka, trying to apologize for the hatred he used to hold for the blonde. It's okay Aruka sensei, but if you really want to apologize, perhaps you could treat me to Ichiraku ramen grinned Naruto. Aruka sighed in relief. Naruto held nothing against him and was still willing to get their favorite meal together. Thank you, Naruto, said Aruka. But I still don't understand. How do you know the cage Bushin no Jutsu? I said I saw it in my dream, said Naruto. As much as I'd like to believe that, I don't see how anyone could learn a Jonin level Jutsu by just dreaming about it, said Aruka. Aruka, I know it may sound unbelievable. And while I may be no sensory ninja, I can't sense any fluctuations in Naruto kun's chakra. It doesn't seem like he's lying, but I too am curious, said Sarutobi before making a motion for an Anbu to appear. After giving the Anbu a message, the Anbu disappeared to carry out its task. I would like to have Yamanaka Inoichi take a look through Naruto kun's mind. We'll figure out the nature behind this dream, and the source of Naruto's learning of the cage Bunshin no Jutsu. I see, said Uruka. Naruto just gave everyone a confused look. Minutes later, Naruto found himself in a chair with an older man who had a blonde ponytail standing in front of him. I see, said the blonde man as the Hokage finished explaining the situation to him before he turned to Naruto. My name is Yamanaka Inoichi. I'm going to be taking a look at this so called dream of yours, Naruto kun. If you just relax, this will all go smoothly. Inoichi's eyes opened in surprise as he finished his mind walk. Naruto was not lying. Somehow, the blonde had actually seen the forbidden scroll of sealing in a dream and had gotten the cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Hokage sama, spoke Inoichi. I see, said the Hokage. This is most intriguing. Once again, the Hokage signaled for an Anbu and a purple haired, cat masked Kunoichi appeared. Nako, please bring Mizuki here. Hokage sama, what do you want with Mizuki? asked Aruka. It appears as if Naruto kun's dream was no dream. Rather, I believe it was a glimpse into the future. Somehow, he saw the events of what transpired or rather, would transpire today, said the Hokage. And you actually think Mizuki was going to betray us? asked Aruka. That will be determined now. I intend to find out what Mizuki's intentions were and if they match the actions displayed in Naruto kun's dream, then I suspect that we may have something most interesting going on here, spoke the Sandame. Minato, could your son actually have awoken that bloodline? Iruka, Naruto, you are both dismissed for now. I will call for both of you in a few days after I have looked further into this matter, said the Hokage. Oh and I don't want either of you to speak of this matter to anyone else. This is to remain a secret until I investigate further. Um wait, spoke Naruto. Everyone looked at the blonde. So do I pass? You know, am I a ninja now? Let's ask Iruka, shall we? Hirazan said, turning to the scar-faced Chunin. How about we celebrate your graduation with a bowl of ramen, 
grinned Aruka before getting tackled by an orange bundle of joy. Here you go! exclaimed Tucci, the ramen chef at Ichiraku Ramen as he placed two large bowls of pork ramen in front of his two best customers, and congratulations Naruto on graduating. So where's your Hite 8, Naruto kun? asked Ayame, the brown haired girl and daughter of Tucci. What? I never got my Hite 8, shouted Naruto as he began freaking out. Here, Uruka said before giving a Konoha Hitai 8 to Naruto from his own head. You really mean it? asked Naruto as his face lit up. Uruka smiled and nodded before tying it on Naruto's head. Wow, thanks Uruka sensei. Hey Ayame Nichan, how do I look? Congratulations Naruto kun, said Ayame. Now you were never told this Naruto because we left before the exam was finished, but you will have to come back for orientation at the academy in a few days. There. You'll be placed on a team underneath a Jonin sensei who will help guide you as a shinobi, explained Aruka. But can't I just have you as a sensei? asked Naruto. Aruka laughed. I'm sorry, Naruto. As much as I'd like to, that's not how things go. But you can always stop by the academy and maybe I can help you make up some of the stuff you missed. Nah. I'm a ninja now, TT Ibeo, exclaimed Naruto. I'm going to be doing awesome ninja stuff and learning cool new jutsus. Aruka laughed. Well, you have two weeks. If there's anything you want during then, don't be afraid to ask. The two slurped their ramen for some time, all twelve bowls of it, before Naruto spoke up again. Hey Aruka sensei, so what do you think is going on? What was the reason for that vision thing that Gigi was talking about? Did I really see the future? I honestly don't know, replied Aruka. I'm as confused about this as you are. I've never heard of a ninja who could see the future. I wonder if Mizuki really meant to do what you said he did. I mean, he tried to fail me, but he didn't make me steal some scroll from Gigi or try, said Naruto. Try to kill me you mean? asked Aruka. Yeah. I can't believe that something like that would happen either, but just thinking about the exam and how everything I did actually turned out to be the right thing makes me believe that it really was more than just a dream, answered Naruto. I don't know what to say. I honestly don't, replied Aruka. Man. That was kind of weird, said Naruto as he woke the next morning. What was that all about? A little kid named Konohamaru, who turns out to be Gigi's grandson who has some closet perv teacher. Today Naruto had decided to get his shinobi registration picture. However, he awoke after having another strange dream or vision, whatever you wanted to call it. Turning in his picture to the Hokage, a tick mark appeared on the old cage's head. Take it again, said an irritated Serutobi throwing the registration form back to Naruto. It was revealed that Naruto had scribbled some weird markings on himself and used that as a registration picture. But I saw it in a dream and I just had to go with it, grinned Naruto. All of the sudden, the door to the office creaked open and a small boy, the same small boy from Naruto's latest dream slid into the room wielding a shuriken. Fight me old man, shouted the kid. Sigh, will it ever end? thought Hiruzen as he lowered the brim of his hat. And now he's going to trip over his scarf, thought Naruto as the young boy, most likely Konohamaru charged at the Hokage, only to trip over his own scarf. Damn it. Who set a trap? shouted Konohamaru. Are you alright? And there isn't a trap anywhere, shouted the boy's instructor, who Naruto immediately identified as the closet perv from his dream, vision. Aha. It was you who set that trap, declared Konohamaru, pointing directly at Naruto. You tripped over your own feet, you idiot, restorted Naruto. Hey, let him go, he's the Hokage's grandson, shouted Ebisu. Hey, come on then, shouted Konohamaru. Go ahead and punch me. Oh wait, you wouldn't dare hurt the Hokage's grandson. You really think I give a damn, idiot, shouted Naruto as he smacked Konohamaru across the head. Hey, you can't do that to the honorable grandson, shouted the closet perv. If you don't let him go, all. You'll what? replied Naruto smugly. How dare you? I am an elite instructor. You'll treat me with respect, exclaimed Ebisu. Oh yeah? Oiroke no jutsu, said Naruto before he transformed into a beautify busty young woman with no clothes on and thin smoke wisps just barely covering her private areas. As if on cue, both the closet perv and the Hokage flew back as blood rocketed out of their noses. Naruto had left the tower, but he wasn't alone. Still, 
his little stalker proved to be more irritating than he originally expected. Even I didn't need that dream, vision, whatever it was to tell me what's going on, thought Naruto before he turned to a poorly disguised Konohamaru, who was trying to blend in with the alley fence. His disguise was perfect, except for the fact that the boards on his blanket were going the wrong way. Stop following me, and you aren't fooling anyone with that, shouted Naruto, pointing at the disguised Konohamaru. He he impressive to see through my disguise. Just what I'd expect from someone like you, smirked Konohamaru. Hey, I'll make you my boss. And in exchange, Naruto expected some ridiculous request, but then again he knew exactly what Konohamaru was going to request. Please teach me that Oirok no jutsu. The rest of the day was filled with horrific attempts at Konohamaru to transform into an acceptable female form. During the evening, Naruto and Konohamaru were taking a break from Konohamaru's training, and Konohamaru explained why he kept trying to attack his grandpa, because he wanted to be recognized as someone other than the honorable grandson of the Hokage. That was why he wanted to be Hokage, for the recognition. Naruto in turn responded that there were no shortcuts to becoming Hokage and if Konohamaru really wanted the hat, he would have to beat Naruto first. In the end, Konohamaru actually saw Naruto as a rival to work towards beating. Oh and the closet perv showed up, only to fall victim to an even more devastating version of the Orok no Jutsu, the Harem no Jutsu. By the end of the day, the closet perv instructor would need several blood transfusions due to massive blood loss. Before leaving the clearing where he and Konohamaru were training, Naruto was approached by the Hokage. I saw your expression in the office earlier today. Did you really know what was going to happen today? Last night. For some strange reason. I had another one of those dreams, replied Naruto. Did you find out anything regarding these visions? Not yet, but I've got a theory. I should have an answer in a few days. I will say this though. Everything you saw regarding Mizuki was true. He really did intend on using you to steal the forbidden scroll of seals and turn traitor, spoke the Hokage. Really? So Mizuki really would try and kill me and Aruka sensei thought Naruto. I honestly can't believe it. A few days later, Naruto was awoken to a knock at the door. Except, there was no knock and instead Naruto had opened the door of his apartment just before Aruka had a chance to knock. I take it Gigi wants to see us now? Naruto asked. Did you? asked a surprised Aruka. It's weird, Aruka sensei. I've had this happen three times now, and whatever I see seems to happen, with the exception of the graduation exams, but there I kind of didn't do what these dreams told me to do, replied Naruto. However, just now was different. It wasn't a dream. I was just enjoying my breakfast when this vision of you showing up to take me to Gigi popped into my head. Well, it's been a few days. Hopefully Hokage-sama has some answers for you, replied Aruka before he grabbed Naruto and Shunshine towards the tower. As Naruto and Aruka entered the Hokage's office, Hiruzen immediately signaled to the Anbu in his office to leave. After the entire office was clear, with the exception of the Hokage, Naruto, and Aruka, the Sandame activated all of the privacy seals in his office. Naruto, I've looked into some of these visions you've been having and I think I know what's going on, said the Sandame. However, I have yet to confirm this for certain, but I know how. Really? Then what do I need to do? Asked the blonde. Turn around and face away from me. Then I want you to channel chakra into your eyes, instructed Hiruzen. Aruka, you are to just stand there and make no sudden movements. Understood. No speaking. No moving. Just stand there for the moment. Hi, Hokage-sama, replied Aruka. When you're ready, Naruto, said the Sandame and Naruto turned away, facing into the wall as he tried to channel as much chakra into his eyes as he could. After a few moments, and without making a single sound, the Hokage pulled out a kanai and threw it at the unsuspecting Naruto, who was looking away and unaware of what the Hokage had just done. Aruka had tried to warn Naruto but a look from the Hokage kept him frozen and silent. Suddenly, Naruto's eyes widened as he jumped to the side to avoid the kanai. What the hell was that? Looking at Naruto, who had now turned around to confront his attacker, Aruka practically gasped at the sight of Naruto and Hiruzen let out a long-held breath. It is as I suspected. You do in fact have that bloodline. Huh, what bloodline? Asked a confused Naruto. Um Naruto, your eyes, said Aruka pointing at Naruto's eyes. Naruto just looked confused, but Hiruzen handed Naruto a mirror and Naruto saw exactly what they were talking about. 
His eyes, which were normally a bright cerulean, now had a glowing purple-ish white twelve-point star with his normal pupils and his blue eyes as a background for the star. Gigi, what is this? Asked a stunned Naruto. It's the dojutsu associated with your bloodline, the Shorigen, future's eye, said Serutobi. What? Bloodline? Asked Naruto. There are legends that speak of an incredibly powerful bloodline that existed over a millennia ago. However, that bloodline was thought to have vanished back then and has since then been shrouded in myth and legend. At this point, Serutobi let out a sigh. There were a few pieces of information that he had found that associated Naruto with this bloodline, but revealing those pieces would reveal some secrets that the elderly Hokage didn't feel Naruto was quite ready to hear. Those eyes, the twelve point star, hold the Shoraigen. As I said, that is the dojutsu associated with the bloodline, known as the Jikaton, time release. Jikaton? asked a wide eyed Naruto. Yes. According to the legends, it's an extremely powerful bloodline that supposedly gave the wielder the power to manipulate the very fabric of time itself, explained the Sandame before pulling out what looked to be a very old scroll. This scroll I found buried in the village archives. It's the only one we have that tells some of the legends regarding this bloodline of yours. And if the legends about it are correct, it was the only power that could match that of the legendary Rakudu Senen, thought the Hokage. Whoa, Naruto gasped. Today was turning out to be a great day after the discovery of an extremely powerful bloodline. Now Naruto, I strongly suggest you keep this bloodline a secret for a little while. Also, from what it appears, those visions you've been having are a result of your dojutsu activating. If your visions and that little demonstration with the kunai are anything to go by, they most likely allowed a glimpse into the future, allowing you to act accordingly. As to how your bloodline activated, I'm not entirely sure myself, but I will say this. What you have is an extremely powerful gift. Do not abuse it. I understand Gigi, replied Naruto. Good. Now, if your dojutsu is even remotely similar to others like the Byakugan and Sharingan, then I believe practicing with it will help you strengthen and control it. Perhaps you'll be able to control these visions of yours instead of having them occur randomly at night, explained Serutobi. Naruto, I feel there is more to your bloodline than just your eyes, but I don't even know where to begin to help you. The best I can do is give you that scroll, but the rest is up to you. Don't worry Gigi. I'll get this down and once I do, You'd better have that hat of yours ready. T.T. Ibeo, exclaimed Naruto. Serutobi let out a slight laugh. I look forward to it. Now, if you want to train with your bloodline over the next few days, I'll provide you with a private training ground. I'm sure Uruka here wouldn't mind helping you train a little bit anyways. Of course I'll help Naruto, Hokage-sama, replied Uruka. Good. With that, the two of you are dismissed. But before you go, Aruka, Naruto's bloodline is considered a sulfur monosulfide class secret, stated the Hokage. I understand, Hokage sama, replied Aruka. Naruto, on the other hand, it is your bloodline and you are free to tell anyone you wish to tell, but I recommend using caution as to who you tell, said Serutobi. Naruto nodded before leaving with Aruka. Naruto was interested to see what else was in that old beat up scroll that the Hokage had given him. Minato. The bloodline that had laid dormant in your family for a millennia has awoken after so much time and in your own son. I wonder what you would say if you were still here to see it with your own eyes, thought Serutobi as he looked up at the picture of his predecessor and successor, the Yandaimi Hokage. Naruto now sat alone in his apartment in front of a mirror. In a sense, he was training, but in reality he was playing with this cool new dojutsu he had discovered, trying to get a feel for how to activate and deactivate it at will. As Naruto concentrated some chakra into his eyes, he opened them while looking into a mirror. Whoa, this is really cool, exclaimed the blonde. Releasing the chakra from his eyes, he saw the twelve-point star disappear and his eyes return to their normal cerulean blue color. And once more, Naruto activated his eyes, only to pass out into darkness. An unknown location, Naruto woke to find himself no longer in his apartment, or Konoha for that matter. Instead, the blonde boy was resting atop what looked to be a towering stone castle. As Naruto looked around, he was taken aback by the amazing sight that lay before him. The tower itself appeared to be perched on a high cliff, overlooking a raging ocean, but that was not the most striking feature of wherever Naruto had ended up. No, the most amazing thing visible was the sky. Numerous moons and stars of different colors and sizes littered the night sky. 
Nowhere had Naruto ever imagined such a sight. After 1000 years, it appears you have arrived once again. Naruto, immediately startled by the voice quickly turned around to see a cloaked figure, covered from head to toe and concealing all but a small glimpse of his face and long white beard. The cloak itself was a midnight blue in color with various golden wisps and circles that danced through the cloak. The other noticeable feature on this man was the hourglass he was carrying in the massive scythe. Who, where am I? And who are you? Where you are is no concern yet and as for who I am, I guess you can call me time, spoke the cloaked figure. Okay, and what am I doing here? Asked Naruto. Why am I not in my apartment? And what did you mean I have arrived again, I've never been here before? Patience, young one, spoke time. You are here because your newly awakened powers brought you here. It was only a matter of time anyways. So what am I doing here? Asked Naruto. I simply, wanted to meet the next bearer of my powers, said time. Wait, do you know something about this bloodline thing I have? Asked Naruto. That bloodline of yours originated from myself since the beginning of time itself. Every 1000 years, it shows itself in a new bearer. You just happen to be the descendant of mine who inherited it this time around, spoke time. Okay, so besides this dojutsu I got, what other powers are there? Inquired Naruto. That is for you to discover. Over time, you will discover more of you are capable, but also face increasingly difficult tests that you must pass, spoke time. What exactly are these tests? Asked Naruto. In time, you will see, spoke time. Why does it sound like this guy has a clock for brains? Thought Naruto at time's constant use of the word, time. It is time for you to go. We will meet again some time in the near future, spoke time before the cloaked man took on a completely different persona and charged at Naruto with blinding speeds, throwing the blonde off the tower. No. Naruto shouted as he suddenly felt a thud as he landed on the hardwood floor of his apartment. Despite having fallen a hundred feet, or so he thought, all Naruto could feel was a slight bump on his head from falling on his floor. That weird cloak guy must have had his head screwed on funny or something, wait, what even happened? Looking over at the clock on his bedside table, Naruto began freaking out. It's already eight o'clock in the morning. What happened all night? Frantically, Naruto began sifting through his clothes. Today was the day of the genin orientation and Naruto was already cutting it much closer than he would have wanted. Currently, Naruto was racing through the streets of Konoha on his way to the very last day he would have to come to the academy. Today was the day of the genin orientation where he would be assigned his team and begin his career as a fully fledged ninja. The blonde newly minted genin arrived at the academy with some time to spare and took a seat, unfortunately next to Uchiha Sasuke. Sasuke was doing the same thing he did every day, brood. Ever since that day where his clan had been massacred, all Sasuke really did was brood and contemplate training. Man, I hope I don't end up on his team, thought Naruto. Hum, now that I think about it, I can find out just exactly who is on my team, hee <laughs> hee. Naruto snickered as he silently activated his Shoragan and tried to get them to see a little into the future when Aruka sensei announced his team. What he saw caused him to nearly hurl his breakfast, or at least last night's dinner seeing as he didn't have time for breakfast, as Naruto darted to the opposite side of the room with speeds that would have put even the yellow flash of Konoha to shame. Oh hell no. There's no way that is happening. Naruto shouted as he had seen something that would be scarred into his mind for eternity, him and Sasuke locking lips. Suddenly, the door burst open and a blonde blur and a pink blur fought their way into the classroom. Get out of the way Eno pig. I'm going to sit with Sasuke-kun, shouted the pink-haired girl. Sakura-chan, chirped Naruto mentally. The very girl that Naruto had a huge crush on since the beginning of the academy had just arrived. Unfortunately, she ran towards the seat where Naruto had just been sitting and plopped herself down next to Sasuke before Ino Pig or any of the other Sasuke fangirls could do the same. Damn, I wish Sakura-chan would have wanted to sit next to me. Oh well. I suppose giving up the chance to sit with Sakura-chan is worth it if that doesn't mean I need to kiss Teme. Still, Naruto couldn't help but glare at Sasuke, despite the warning he had just been given by his eyes. Today I'm going to get Sasuke-kun's first kiss, eek! shrieked one of the people who actually wanted to kiss Sasuke, Sakura. Cha! And I'm going to steal his first kiss, exclaimed inner Sakura. Successfully avoiding what would have been a travesty. Naruto waited until Uruka came in, 
occupying his time by chatting with Choji and Kiba. They tried to make conversation with Shikamaru and Shino as well, but Shikamaru was napping and Shino was well, Shino. Starting today, all of you are real shinobi, Iruka said as he proceeded through his graduation speech which Naruto mentally tuned out as he tried to focus on finding out who was on his team. Now that I've avoided that disaster, time to see if I'm on Sakura-chan's team, hee hee, smirked Naruto as he reactivated his dojutsu. From today on, you'll each be placed on a team. We try to balance the team's strengths and weaknesses, Iruka was immediately interrupted by a loud shout coming from the direction of Naruto. What? Iruka-sensei, why the hell am I on Sasuke Tami's team? shouted Naruto. Naruto, how do you know about the teams? glared Iruka, but not before he caught a glimpse of Naruto's activated dojutsu. Just great, but why am I not surprised? Just, never mind Naruto, said Iruka, sighing and mentally face palming himself. Che, like I'd ever be placed on a team with that loose, thought the brooding Uchiha. Naruto's on Sasuke's team. But then, no. Aruka sensei hasn't announced the teams yet and how could Naruto of all people know that he's with Sasuke? Yeah, I'll be the one on Sasuke-kun's team, thought Sakura. Team 7 is Uzumaki Naruto, Haruno Sakura, Aruka announced. Wait, I am on Sakura-chan's team? Thought a now excited Naruto. He stopped the vision the moment he saw he was on Sasuke's team and never saw who the third member was. Yeah. Sakura's head fell onto her desk upon learning she was paired with Naruto. And Uchiha Sasuke, Aruka announced the final member of the team and Naruto and Sakura switched places. Everyone was now looking at Naruto, wondering how exactly the Dobi had got the prediction that he would be with Sasuke correct. Naruto glared at Sasuke and the Uchiha just grunted. Just don't get in my way, Dobi, said Sasuke. But still, how did he know I was going to be stuck with him? Somehow. Naruto had found out about the team placements and this had actually managed to catch the Uchiha's attention. Team 8 will be Hayuga Hanada, Inazuka Kiba, and Abarame Shino, announced Aruka. The young puppy atop the Inazuka boy's head barked and Kiba just grinned. He had already figured, based on some of the stories from his clan, that this would be the best combination for a top-notch tracking team. I'm N not with N Naruto-kun, thought the midnight blue-haired Hayuga sitting near the back of the room. To just about everyone except Naruto, it was pretty obvious that Hanada had a huge crush on the blonde troublemaker. While she was disappointed she wasn't going to be on Naruto's team, Hanada still decided that she'd do her best in order to gain her father's approval and hopefully the attention of her crush. Shino just remained as stoic as ever as he gave his new teammates a quick nod. Team 9 is still active so Team 10 will be Nara Shikamaru, Yamanaka Ino, and Akamichi Choji, announced Aruka. Shikamaru just grinned at Ino's misfortune and the fact that he was on a team with his best friend. This afternoon, we'll introduce you to your Jonin senseis. Until then, you can take a break. Outside the academy, Naruto had once again approached Sakura with the prospects of asking her out on a date, only to reject it once again. Clearly, she was interested in finding Sasuke and asking him out on a date, using the, we're on the same team now, excuse. Even if I go after him using my looks, my body proportions are below average, the only thing above average is the size of my forehead, thought a depressed Sakura. She just sat there, daydreaming of Sasuke, standing just opposite the park bench she was currently sitting on, admiring her forehead for just how kissable it was. It was when she opened her eyes that she actually realized that Sasuke was in fact standing just opposite her, admiring her forehead. You sure have a large charming forehead, called out a voice from across the street. Sakura picked up her head to see Sasuke walking over towards her. It almost makes me want to kiss it. HMPH, that sounds like something Naruto would say. Sakura's head dropped in disappointment. Sakura, there's something I want to ask you, spoke Sasuke. What do you think of Naruto? Huh? Asked Sakura, not quite expecting that question. He always getting in the way when I do something important, and he enjoys to see me struggle. He really is annoying. Somehow, Sasuke seemed disappointed and shaken by this response. All I want is for you to acknowledge me. And I'm absolutely serious about this. I would do anything, because I like you a lot. Sakura moved in to steal that kiss from Sasuke like she had planned. And unbelievably, Sasuke was going for it. That is, until, Sasuke, stopped and immediately turned his head to see none other than Uchiha Sasuke walking down the road, 
sending a death glare towards the doppelganger. Flashback no jutsu Sasuke was sitting in solitude, enjoying his own lunch. He really wasn't paying attention to his surroundings, although a ninja should always pay attention to his surroundings so chances were that he only looked oblivious to what was happening. Moments later, Naruto tackled him from behind with a rope in hand. However, being the rookie of the year, Sasuke was easily able to dispatch Naruto and use the very rope that was intended for him to bind the blonde. That was when. What? exclaimed a surprised Sasuke as Naruto disappeared, revealing it to be a shadow clone. That was a solid clone. Since when could he use a solid clone? Taking advantage of Sasuke's surprise, Naruto and three other clones jumped on him and bound the Uchiha before using a Henge no Jutsu transformation to take on his appearance. End flashback no jutsu, huh? Sasuke kun? asked a now confused Sakura before looking towards the Sasuke she was about to kiss. That Sasuke poofed in smoke, revealing it to be none other than Naruto. A tick mark appeared on Sakura's forehead as her death glare mimicked that of Sasuke's. Naruto, growled Sakura as she cracked her knuckles. Naruto jumped back, avoiding the fist that he had seen coming. His dojutsu had already told him this was going to happen when it unexpectedly activated while Sakura was trying to kiss, Sasuke. Unfortunately, it was too late for any sort of damage control. Now Naruto stood opposite both Sasuke and Sakura, who wanted nothing more than to beat him into the ground for that little stunt he pulled. Why did you try to impersonate Sasuke-kun? growled Sakura. It really is a shame you don't have any parents. This immediately caught the attention of the already annoyed Sasuke. Naruto, who was also listening, looked down. She had just hit a painful chord in Naruto's heart. You think you can do whatever you want just because you don't have any parents to ground you? I know if I acted like you, my parents would ground me for months. You know, you're actually kind of lucky you don't have any parents at home. All alone, spoke Sasuke unexpectedly. The feeling of a parent yelling at you is nowhere near what it feels like not even having one. With that, Sasuke just sulked away seeing this little confrontation as not being worth his effort. Sasuke-kun, what's wrong? asked Sakura. You're, annoying, glared Sasuke at Sakura as the pink-haired girl suddenly broke, mirroring her expression to the one on Naruto's face. You're annoying, Sasuke's words echoed in Sakura's head before turning to the blonde who was now walking away himself. Naruto. Naruto stopped his stride as he heard Sakura's words call out for him. Naruto. I'm sorry for what I said, apologized Sakura, unexpectedly. After being called, annoying, like she just was from Sasuke, Sakura had begun to understand just a little bit what Naruto feels like. Perhaps she could try to be a little nicer to Naruto, especially since they were going to be on a ream together. I really am. It's okay Sakura-chan, replied Naruto. In all honesty, he still had what was said on his mind. Perhaps he did annoy Sakura too much. I think we should get back. We're supposed to meet our sensei soon, replied Sakura, just trying to move on from the rather painful first conversation their team just had. Back in the academy, one by one, the senseis came to collect their teams. Within ten minutes of the designated time, all the senseis had collected their teams. All the teams were off learning cool ninja stuff with their senseis, all of them except Team 7. Naruto. Just sit down, shouted Sakura. It had been nearly two hours that Sakura, Naruto, and Sasuke had been sitting in awkward silence. Why is our sensei so damn late? exclaimed the restless blonde. Before anything else could be said, Naruto's mischievous mind was at work as he took an eraser from the board and wedged it into the door crack. Peefed, like a janin would fall for that, said Sasuke. Sakura was saying the same thing although inner Sakura was anxiously waiting for their sensei to fall for the trap. A few minutes later and Sasuke was already eating his own words as a one-eyed janin with gravity-defying hair came walking through the door, causing the eraser to fall and bop him on the head. Naruto was rolling on the ground, laughing, Sakura was denying all involvement, inner Sakura was cheering, and Sasuke was seriously doubting the quality of this janin. Hum, how can I say this? My first impression is, the janin said, examining his team, I don't like you guys. A wave of dread hung over the three before they were instructed to meet on the top of the school. Okay, let's begin with introducing yourself, said the Janin. Why don't you tell your likes, dislikes, future dreams, hobbies, and things like that? Hey, why don't you introduce yourself first? asked Naruto. Well, 
My name is Hitaki Kakashi. I have no desire to tell you my likes and dislikes. My dreams, hmm. I guess I have a few hobbies. Team 7 Deadpan. All they had learned was his name. Okay, you blondie. Naruto pouted at the nickname. I'm Uzumaki Naruto. What I like is trying different kinds of ramen and what I hate is the three minutes for cup ramen to cook. Does he think about only ramen? Thought Kakashi. I also dislike those who look down upon people for something out of their control, said Naruto. Hum. So I take it he knows, thought Kakashi, referring to the Kayubi. As for my dream, I'm going to surpass all the Hokages and become the greatest Hokage myself. Tt Ibeo, exclaimed Naruto. As for hobbies, I like pulling pranks. Okay. You next broody, said Kakashi, chuckling at the scowl on Sasuke's face. My name is Uchiha Sasuke. There are lots of things I dislike and I don't really like anything. And what I have really isn't a dream, but rather an ambition. I'm going to resurrect my clan and kill a certain someone, said Sasuke. He better not mean me, thought Naruto. And as for you, Pinky, said Kakashi. My name is Haruno Sakura. The thing I like is, well the person I like is, and um my dream for the future. Sakura said all while looking toward Sasuke as she blushed and giggled. What I dislike, is na. Sakura stopped herself as she remembered her promise to try and be a little nicer to Naruto. I don't like Eno Pig, and my hobby, Sakura started to giggle again. Well this is certain an interesting group, and I wonder what this thing the Hokage wanted to talk to me about tomorrow regarding Naruto is, thought Kakashi. So that's it for introductions. Tomorrow, we'll start our duties as shinobi. We're going to do something with just the four of us, survival training. Why is our first duty training? We've had enough training at the academy, replied Sakura. This isn't any normal training. I'll be your opponent, said Kakashi. What kind of training is it then? Asked Naruto. Well, out of 27 graduates, there are only 9 that will be chosen to become genin. The rest will be sent back to the academy. This is a very difficult exam with a failure rate of over 66%, said Kakashi. The expressions on everyone's faces were priceless. But we worked so hard. Then what was the point of graduating? shouted Naruto. That was just to select those who have the chance to become genin, replied Kakashi. And tomorrow, you'll have to show your real skills on the training ground. Bring all the shinobi tools you have. Oh, and skip breakfast, you might throw up if you don't. With that, Kakashi handed them all a sheet with the details of the test before leaving the three of his genin hopefuls. Later that night, Naruto had just got done punishing a stuffed pillow that looked a lot like a scarecrow. Right? I'm so ready for the test tomorrow, exclaimed Naruto. I wonder what kind of test this is going to be. I wish I knew. If only there was a way to figure out what Kakashi sensei was going to do with us tomorrow. Damn it! shouted Naruto before he sat himself down on his bed, assuming a meditative pose. It took almost 30 minutes for Naruto to focus his dojutsu in order to see into the next day. After seeing himself tied to a log, Naruto stopped the vision and began to actually prepare for the next day. Both Sasuke and Sakura showed up at the training ground at 7 o'clock in the morning. Where is Naruto? Does he really want to fail that badly that he didn't even bother showing up? Asked Sakura. After about 20 minutes they had realized that not only their sensei, but also their other teammate was late. Around 8.30, Naruto finally showed, seeing a glaring Sakura and Sasuke just staring at him. What? Asked Naruto, merely tilting his head. Where were you? Shouted Sakura. Well, Sensei's not going to show up for a little longer so I figured I wouldn't waste my time waiting for him to be late, replied Naruto. Really? How did you know he was going to be late though? What if he wasn't and you would have failed? Asked Sakura. Well, I figured that since he was two hours late yesterday, he'd be late today, said Naruto. Besides, I stopped and got breakfast. With that, Naruto pulled out a few apples from his back pouch and handed them to Naruto and Sasuke. But I thought Kakashi sensei said not to eat, replied Sakura. He suggested not eating, but I'd rather be energized and ready to go than starving, replied Naruto. The dobi actually makes sense for once, thought Sasuke as he took a bite of the apple. But still, how did he know Kakashi was going to be late like this? Sakura-chan? Shouldn't you eat as well? Asked Naruto pushing the apple towards Sakura. Um, I'm actually on a diet, but thanks, Sakura replied. You absolutely sure? prodded Naruto. 
I mean it's just an apple and you won't be hungry all morning. Sakura actually looked over towards Sasuke for an answer. Just eat it already. Sensei could show at any moment. About 30 minutes later, Kakashi finally showed. You're late. Yeah, yeah, said Kakashi, shaking them off as he set an alarm clock down upon the stump. He then held up a pair of bells. Here are two bells, your task is to take these from me before time's up. Those who don't have a bell by noon, don't get lunch. And I'll not only tie you to one of those stumps, but I'll also eat right in front of you. So that's why he said not to eat, thought Sakura, now glad she actually ate that apple. However, looking at his team, Kakashi noticed the lack of hunger in them. Did these guys actually not take my warning? Thought Kakashi. Oh well, it's not like they'll pass anyways. You only have to get one bell and since there are only two of them, at least one of you will definitely be tied to a post, and, the person who doesn't get a bell fails and will be sent back, meaning at least one of you will be sent back to the academy. If you want, you can use shuriken and kanais. You won't succeed unless you come at me with the intent to kill, said Kakashi. But you'll be in danger, exclaimed Sakura. Yeah, you're so slow you can't even dodge a blackboard eraser. We'll definitely kill you, taunted Naruto. In the real world, those with no talent often bark the loudest. We'll ignore Mr. Dead Last and start when I say, said Kakashi. The dead last comment was really irking Naruto on as the blonde grabbed a kanai and prepared to throw it into the Jonin's smug mouth. Before he knew it, Kakashi had moved behind Naruto, grabbed the kanai, and held it to the back of Naruto's head. Calm down. I haven't said start yet, said Kakashi. For the first time since meeting him, Team 7 was actually impressed with the speed at which the Jonin moved at. Well, it seems you're ready to come at me with the intent to kill. So you've finally acknowledged me. Hmm. Maybe I'm actually beginning to like you guys. Okay, begin. With that, all three of them darted off to take cover in the woods, all except. Come here and fight me, declared Naruto, earning a sweat drop from everyone. Um, you're a little bit off, said Kakashi. Hey. We'll just see who's talking when I'm through with you. You won't even know what hit you. I suppose I'll play for a little, thought Naruto, recalling the fight from the last night. The only thing off is your haircut. Naruto charged Kakashi but backed off as Kakashi pulled out a weapon, cleverly disguised as an orange book titled Icha Icha Paradise. Well, it wasn't really a weapon, but Kakashi still saw it as a way to get into Naruto's head. Shinobi fighting lesson number one, Taijutsu, said Kakashi. What's wrong? Hurry and attack me. But, hey. What's with that book? Asked Naruto, trying to fake the surprise, but not having any trouble with the disappointment part. I just wanted to know what happens next. But don't worry, it won't make a difference against your guys, said Kakashi calmly as he read his book. That's it. I'm going to kick your ass, shouted Naruto as he charged at Kakashi, throwing a barrage of punches and kicks that were all effortlessly blocked. Naruto made a sweeping kick at Kakashi's head only for the Jonin to disappear and then reappear behind him, his hands in a tiger seal. A shinobi isn't supposed to get caught from behind, Baka, said Kakashi. What? A surprised Sakura asked to herself. His hand position. He's going to use ninjutsu against Naruto. No way, is that the fire seal? Thought Sasuke. This guy's totally serious. Naruto. Run away. You're going to get killed. Sakura shouted, trying to warn Naruto. What? Asked a frantic Naruto, turning his head. Too late, smirked Kakashi. Well if you could see beneath his mask he was smirking. On the outside, Naruto was sweating, but on the inside, I can't believe I've let it get this far, but this is where I get serious. With that, Naruto's eyes took on the twelve-point star of the Shiroigan and a murderous glint appeared in Kakashi's eye. Konohagakir Haiden Taijutsu Ogi Senen Garashi. Kakashi shouted as he thrust his fingers forward, his target, Naruto's ass. Just as Kakashi's fingers made contact with Naruto's bottom, the orange genin disappeared in a flash of smoke, leaving behind a log, with an explosive note attached. Kakashi's one eye widened as the note exploded violently. From their vantage points, both Sakura and Sasuke were amazed at what had just transpired. Had Kakashi just fallen for another of Naruto's traps? The explosive note had gone off too soon for Kakashi to get a kawarimi, replacement technique, he had jumped backwards in hopes of getting away from the epicenter of the blast, but the blast was enough to force back even more, closer to the trees. 
Well that clearly was unexpected. Perhaps there's something more to this one, Kakashi thought. He had seen the faint grin on Naruto's face just the very moment before the Kawarimi of Naruto's kicked in. As Kakashi came to a halt, there was a faint rustle in the trees behind him as dozens of Naruto clones all leapt out of the trees and rushed the Jonin before he could regain his footing. Before Kakashi knew it, the clones were literally on top of him, trying to punch the living daylights out of the one-eyed scarecrow. However, Kakashi wasn't a Jonin for nothing and he forced some room between the clones and himself. Shadow clones, so the rumors about him using that jutsu in the graduation exam were true. Still, Kakashi just grinned. Both Sakura and Sasuke were actually amazed that the supposed dead last had managed to form over 30 clones, and not just the illusionary kind. Pulling out a kanai, Kakashi quickly went to work fending off the clones until only one remained, the real one. As Naruto charged, Kakashi landed a swift kick into Naruto's stomach as he slid back into the creek and disappeared beneath the surface. Looking down at his side, Kakashi giggled as he noticed both bells at his side still. Not caring anymore, he returned his attention to his book, wondering if Naruto would make a return appearance, or if it was someone else's turn. Naruto, Sakura sighed. She had actually gotten excited watching Naruto take on Kakashi sensei like that and for a faint moment, she actually thought the blonde could do it and take a bell. From up in his perch, Sasuke immediately saw that the Jonin had just lowered his guard and threw a barrage of kanai and shuriken at Kakashi, clocking him in the side of the head. Unfortunately, Kakashi turned into nothing more than a log filled with blades and Sasuke suddenly kicked into full gear, realizing he had been figured out. Damn, a kawarimi, and now he knows where I am, thought Sasuke as he quickly took off. Sasuke had taken the bait and fallen for Kakashi's trap. Seeing this as well, Sakura was immediately running as well, not wanting to get separated from Sasuke. Sasuke-kun, where is he? Could Kakashi-sensei already have gotten him? No, Sasuke-kun wouldn't let that happen to him. Suddenly, Sakura's attention was captured by an aloof Kakashi standing below the tree she was in. She let out a held breath as she realized that Kakashi hadn't noticed her. Sakura, behind you, a voice called out and surprised, Sakura turned around to find the weird-haired Jonin making a quick hand sign, and Sakura was immediately wrapped in a shroud of leaves. As the leaves cleared, Sakura looked frantically around for Kakashi-sensei. Sakura, help, me, groaned Sasuke as he collapsed against the side of a nearby tree. A horrified look shot across Sakura's face as she gazed upon Sasuke's body that had a massive number of kanai and shuriken sticking out of him. Breathing heavily, Sasuke finally dropped over, dead, and Sakura began tearing up. Sasuke a. Hum, I think that was a bit too much, said Kakashi as he read the next page in his book. Shinobi fighting lesson number two, Genjutsu. Sakura easily fell for it. Dashing through the trees, Sasuke eyed an unresponsive form of Sakura, practically foaming at the mouth. He immediately detected that she had suffered the effects of a Genjutsu. Genjutsu, a form of hypnotism, she'd fallen for that, but, Sasuke leapt down into a clearing. Say that after you get a bell, said Kakashi. Well well, the village's most powerful clan, the Uchiha clan. This could be interesting. The battle began with a quick flick of Sasuke's wrist and a few shuriken flew towards Kakashi. Kakashi easily dodged, mocked Sasuke's futile efforts, and realized that it was a trap. Kakashi was forced to dodge a barrage of knives that had come from the trap which Sasuke had triggered with one of his shuriken. As Kakashi came to a halt, he noticed Sasuke striking out at him with his foot. Kakashi blocked it with easy, but Sasuke adjusted his position and struck again, causing Kakashi to grab his hand. Using Kakashi's own body as leverage, Sasuke swung as he reached for a bell. Just as his hand touched the bell, Kakashi threw him away, bell less. What a guy, I didn't even have time to read my book, thought Kakashi. Damn it, so that's what this test it about said Naruto as he hopped down from a tree he was sitting upon. There's maybe an hour or so left in this test. I've gotta get Sakura-chan and Sasuke to work with me. Next time, I shouldn't stop the vision until it's really over. And with that, Naruto was off to find his two teammates, a slight jingle coming from his back pouch. I have to acknowledge that you are different from the other two, said Kakashi before he began to notice that Sasuke was forming some hand seals. Kaden. Gukaku no Jutsu. Fire release, great fireball jutsu. Inhaling a deep breath, 
Sasuke prepared to unleash his ninjutsu. What? exclaimed Kakashi. A genin shouldn't have enough chakra to perform that jutsu. Before Kakashi knew it, he was engulfed in a large fireball. Sasuke smirked, but it was quickly wiped from his face as all that was in place of the giant fireball was a crater. Where is he? In the air? No on the side? Where could he be? Below you. A voice called out to Sasuke's surprise. Doden. Shinju Zanshu no Jutsu, Earth Release, Double Suicide Decapitation Technique. Sasuke was unable to react as Kakashi's hands popped out of the ground, grabbed his ankles, and dragged him shoulder deep into the ground. Shinobi Fighting Lesson Number 3, Ninjutsu, Lessened Kakashi. Well, you're already way further than the others. But hey, they say an exposed nail should be hammered in, haha. <laughs> Damn you. Cursed Sasuke. Hee <laughs> hee. Instead of just wasting time trying to get a bell, I can just hide and eat all the food now!" exclaimed Naruto as he grabbed the two bento boxes sitting on top of a stone located on the training ground. Hey buddy, smiled Kakashi as he appeared atop the stone, what do you think you're doing? Sasuke looked around, trying to find someone who could dig him out of the ground. Moments later, Sakura came dashing out of the bush, freezing the moment she saw Sasuke as only a head sticking out of the ground, she passed out. Sasuke sighed, but before he could mutter something to himself, another person arrived. Need some help there? Grinned Naruto as he got to work digging Sasuke out of the ground followed by waking Sakura up. There's not much time left, said Sasuke, I'm going again. Sasuke-kun, you're still going after a bell? Asked Sakura. I already touched one, next time I'll get it, said Sasuke. This is bad, there's no way now I can get a bell. At this rate, I'll be separated from Sasuke-kun, thought a worried Sakura. You know, there's not much time left, there's always next time. Or we could actually do what this test was meant for, spoke Naruto. What do you mean? Asked Sakura. Why would we be put into teams of three only for two of us to pass? Asked Naruto. I don't have time to think on such questions. I have to get stronger and surpass him, the one I need to kill, scoffed Sasuke. And that's exactly the attitude that will cause us to fail, said Naruto. There's an answer to passing this test, teamwork. Suddenly, both Sakura and Sasuke realized what Naruto was getting at. Didn't we learn back in the academy that ninja worked in teams? Asked Naruto. Now Sakura and Sasuke couldn't believe that it was actually Naruto lecturing them. In reality, Naruto was just repeating the lecture that he heard Kakashi giving them in his vision. This test was meant to make us fight amongst ourselves with only two bells. They couldn't believe it, but Sakura and Sasuke actually saw the logic in Naruto's words. So we need to work together to get the bells? Asked Sasuke. Fine, but we don't. Ring. Kakashi sat atop one of the posts, the same one Naruto now found himself tied to. Wait, if Naruto's there, Sakura said as she came in the clearing with Sasuke and surprisingly Naruto. Kakashi turned to the grinning Naruto who just disappeared. Shadow clone. There's definitely more to this kid, thought Kakashi. Okay, seeing as none of you got a bell, up against the po. A jingle rang through the training ground as Naruto pulled a bell out of his back pouch. Everyone's eyes, or eye in Kakashi's case, widened. Kakashi looked down at the two bells on his belt to see one disappear. He disguised a shadow clone as a bell and switched it with a real one. Probably when he tried to mob me with shadow clones. With that many, even I would have trouble keeping track of all of them, especially without my Sharingan. Sasuke's reaction was more surprised than Kakashi's contemplating look. H. How? How did he get one? I switched it out with a shadow clone when you were fighting off 50 of them, Kakashi sensei, explained Naruto. Okay. I guess Naruto can eat while the rest of you get tied to a post said Kakashi before he grabbed Sakura and Sasuke and tied them to the posts. Well, let's see now. I would say that there's no need for all of you to go back to the academy. Wait, we pass? Asked Sakura, but all I did was pass out. Naruto however, knew what was coming. In fact, Naruto will be the only one going back to the academy. The two of you, should just quit as shinobi. A horrified look shot across Sakura's face and Sasuke just glared at Kakashi. And Naruto, the only reason you got a bell was because I solely underestimated you, and by the time I had realized it, you had already blown a log up in my face. I promise you I won't make that same mistake again. Still, 
Sending you back to the academy is a hard thing to do because in reality, you're all just punks who don't deserve to call yourselves ninja, said Kakashi. Why do you think that you were divided into three-man teams? So Naruto was right when he said this test was about teamwork, asked Sakura, slightly surprised. I see one of you figured it out. Too bad it's too late, said Kakashi. In the real world, one or more of you would be dead right now. Had you three have worked together from the start, Naruto wouldn't be the only one with a bell, or in real cases, he'd be the only one alive. A look of dread swept across everyone's faces, and Naruto, in a real situation, I wouldn't have underestimated you. I would have just killed you from the first moment you attacked me. You only got that bell out of sheer luck. Peefed. That's what you think, scoffed Naruto mentally. In these duties, you will be risking your lives, and if you don't work together as a team, you will die, said Kakashi ominously before turning to the stone near the training posts. Look at the number of names carved on this stone. These are all ninja who have been recognized as heroes of this village. However, they aren't just normal heroes. They are all heroes who died in the line of duty, said Kakashi. Everyone's face is saddened. The names of my two best friends are carved upon this stone. I'll tell you what, I'll give you guys one more chance to get the remaining bell for me, but I'll make it much tougher and I won't be underestimating any of you, said Kakashi. Now Naruto, I'll give you an option. You can trade that bell of yours for some food, but if you take the food, you cannot give any to Sakura or Sasuke. Naruto thought for a moment, or pretended to think. In reality, he already knew what was coming and what had to be done to pass. Fine, said the blonde before tossing the bell to Kakashi, who handed Naruto some food in exchange. As Kakashi left, Naruto opened the box and tried to ignore the stares of Sakura and Sasuke. While the apple breakfast helped, both had been expending their energy all morning and were starving by this point. Quickly, Naruto cut the ropes binding his two teammates and set the box down between them. Naruto, why did you give up the bell? asked Sasuke. Because, as a team, we need the food and energy more, replied Naruto. Now let's eat quickly before Kakashi sensei comes back. Naruto, how exactly did you get a bell from Kakashi? asked Sasuke. And what about yesterday in class when you knew you were going to be on my team? Or this morning when you knew Kakashi was going to be late or the, no breakfast, was one of his tricks. It's not something I want to talk about this moment. I promise I'll tell you, but let me tell you when I'm ready to talk about it, said Naruto. He didn't want to reveal his bloodline to them just yet. Sure they were his team and it would be a sign that he trusted them, but he still wasn't quite ready to show it. Oh come on Naruto, urged Sakura. No, just leave it. He said he'll tell us, so we'll give him some time before we have to force it, said Sasuke. Anyways, he's right, we need to eat if we're going to stand a chance against Kakashi. A few moments passed as Team 7 began to scarf down the single bento box. Naruto, about yesterday, I really am sorry for what I said, said Sakura. I know, perhaps I was a little annoying always asking you out as well. I promise I won't bother you as much anymore, said Naruto. Sasuke sighed, just promise me you won't pull that stunt again, will you? Naruto grinned and rubbed the back of his head. Then I'm sorry for the way I lashed out at you two earlier. If anyone had known the arrogant nature that was associated with the Uchiha clan before they were massacred, they wouldn't have believed Sasuke was an Uchiha. I mean was he actually apologizing for once? No, it's fine Sasuke-kun. I never really knew how you or even Naruto felt, said Sakura. Before any more could be said, Kakashi reappeared in front of them before examining the cut ropes, bento box, and grain of rice on the side of Sakura's mouth. I told you not to feed them. You guys. Sakura and Sasuke both cowered in fear, and even though Naruto knew what was going to happen next he couldn't help but shiver slightly at the display Kakashi was putting on. Pass, said Kakashi. Three, two, one. What? shouted Sakura. I said, you guys pass, smiled Kakashi. You guys are the first. Everyone else would just do whatever I told them. They were just morons. A ninja must see underneath the underneath. Those who break the rules and codes in the ninja world are called trash, but you know what? Those who don't look after their comrades are worse than trash. Right, that ends the training exercise. Starting tomorrow, Team 7 will begin its true duties as ninja, 
said Kakashi, before he noticed a messenger bird circling above the training ground. Everyone looked at him curious as the bird landed on Kakashi's arm and he pulled a small scroll from its pouch on its leg. It appears as if I've been summoned to the Hokage, said Kakashi. Naruto, he's also requesting you. We'll meet back here at 8 o'clock tomorrow. Hokage's office, ah Kakashi, Naruto-kun, I take it the training exercise went well. Asked Sarutobi as he took a smoke from his pipe, signaled for the Anbu to leave, and activated the privacy seals. Kakashi, I'm sure you have some questions for Naruto-kun regarding the exercise. Naruto immediately realized what this was about. He didn't need his bloodline to tell him that this was about his bloodline. Yes, out there, in the training ground. You knew I was going to use the Senen Garashi, didn't you? Asked Kakashi. I saw the look on your face the moment before you replaced yourself. Like I said, I underestimated you until you blew that log up in my face. You had that log prepped for that exact moment. I take it that is why I'm here, Gigi. Asked Naruto. Yes, I feel it would be best for Kakashi to know considering he's going to be teaching you from now on. I also overheard your teammates asking about it and I agree with your decision to reveal it to them as well, but also understand that you want to wait a little, said the Hokage. A team cannot function without trust and a member of the team needs to be able to entrust knowledge of their own abilities with their comrades for the team to function to its highest degree. So what is this little surprise? Asked Kakashi. Kakashi, as a Jonin, and one of the few who I can say with the utmost confidence that I trust, you were granted access to some of the older village archives, including one that contained pieces of information regarding a very powerful and, once believed lost, bloodline, said the Sandame before pointing to Naruto, who now had the Shoregen active. It took a lot to truly surprise Hitaki Kakashi. The revelation that one of his students actually possessed the fabled Jikadan bloodline was way more than enough to cause the Jonin's eye to nearly pop out of its socket. So that's how you knew, and not just the Senen Garashi too, said Kakashi. You're late, sorry, I was on my way here when I suddenly became lost on the road of life, said Kakashi, causing everyone to sweat drop. Is this going to be a normal thing? asked Naruto as he quietly activated his eyes. Wait. I don't need my dojutsu for this. He's been late three times out of three already, of course this is going to be a regular thing. So anyways, today we start our duties as shinobi of this village. The other day, you asked me why training was so important and that you thought you did enough of it in the academy, said Kakashi. Well, I'll tell you now that a shinobi should never stop training if they hope to accomplish their goals. Therefore, we'll train for the mornings until lunch and then we'll do a mission. Sound good. No one really had any complaints, that was until Kakashi started them on some ridiculous teambuilding exercises. If they thought those teambuilding exercises were lame, just wait until the mission that awaited them. What's the distance to the target? Kakashi called out through the wireless radio. Five meters. I'm ready any time, called Sasuke. So am I. Me too. Okay. On my mark. Go. Kakashi called out as the three genin dove out of their hiding place to capture their target. Gotcha, exclaimed Naruto. N-Y-A-A-A. Screamed the cat which Naruto now had in a grapple. Ribbon on the left ear, are you sure this is the target Tora? Asked Kakashi. Yeah, we're sure, replied Sasuke. Good, lost pet. Tora, retrieval mission complete, said Kakashi as Naruto was busy getting his face torn up by a pair of cat claws. Minutes later, oh my cute little Tora-chan, I was so worried, squealed Madame Shinji, the wife of the fire daimyo and the owner of Tora. No wonder it ran away, thought Sakura as she witnessed the strangling of the cat at the hands of its owner. Ha, in your face you stupid cat, exclaimed Naruto. Good job team Kakashi, you are finished for today. Report back tomorrow for your mission, addressed the Hokage. Man that was a lame first mission. I thought being a ninja was all about saving princesses or battling other ninja, replied Naruto as they exited the room. Well, you've all got to start somewhere, said Kakashi. Now same place, same time tomorrow. Are we going to get a better mission tomorrow? Asked Naruto. Perhaps, said Kakashi before shun shining away. Well that was lame, who's up for ramen? Asked Naruto. Fine, but only if you're treating, said Sakura. Sasuke just shrugged. Oi, 
Shikamaru. The lazy Nara yawned before turning around to see Team 7 walking towards him. He was with Choji and a semi-reluctant Ino, who was still pouting about not being put on Sasuke's team, unlike her rival Sakura. Naruto. I see you guys made it through the test, said Shikamaru. We're going to grab ramen. Wanna join us and talk it over? Asked Naruto. Meh. Why not? Shrugged Shikamaru. Choji had no complaints with ramen, or anything edible for that matter. By the time Team 7 and Team 10 arrived at Ichiraku, Sakura and Ino were practically at each other's throats arguing over who got to sit next to Sasuke. I see, so you guys had to get bells from your sensei. Said Shikamaru. I bet Sasuke-kun got a bell within seconds of the test starting, said Ino, who was still fighting with Sakura over the seating. Actually, the only one who got a bell was the dobi over there, said Sasuke as he pointed to Naruto. And I'm still wondering how. There's something more about the dobi. He said he'll tell us in time, so I'll give him a little longer before I push it some more. Wow, way to go Naruto, congratulated Choji. Yeah, and then he went ahead and traded the bell for lunch, said Sakura. Hmm, that sounds like a good trade to me, replied Choji. Anything that deals with food is a good trade in your mind, said Ino. Yeah, but in the end it was all a trick to see if we could work together, said Naruto. Yeah, that's the trick to these tests. My dad told me all about them, said Choji. So what did you guys have to do? Asked Sakura. Asuma sensei had us navigate an obstacle course that we had to work together on to complete. There's a reason the three of us were put together on a team, explained Shikamaru. Our families work well together and that's what Asuma sensei wanted to see. I see. So what sort of mission did you get? Asked Sakura. Troublesome kids, groaned Shikamaru. We were stuck babysitting a bunch of brats, sighed Ino. So you didn't get any sort of awesome mission either? Asked Naruto. I think there's something fishy about these D ranks. We were stuck catching a stupid cat. Owch, that must have been a complete drag, said Shikamaru. You're late. Once again, Kakashi was two hours late to meet with his team. They had been together for over two weeks now and every day, it was the same exact story. Kakashi would be late, they would do some lame team building exercise, and then get stuck with an even lamer mission. So today, Kakashi was cut off. No, we don't want any stinking team building exercise. We want to learn some cool ninja skill, declared Naruto as he just plopped himself down on top of one of the training posts. During Kakashi's tardiness, Naruto had taken it upon himself to ensure that what they were doing today wasn't what they had been doing for the past two weeks. So you want to learn a cool ninja skill? Asked Kakashi, as he just looked at them before making a smile with his eye. Well, they have been completing the team building exercises, even if Naruto and Sasuke would tend to get a little competitive. Okay fine, said Kakashi. But, if I teach you a cool ninja skill, you will have to do 2D ranks today and no training as tomorrow will be all training. Sighing, Team 7 accepted the proposition. Their D ranks for the day, weeding a garden and picking up trash out of a river. Man, today sucked, thought Naruto as he made his way back from cleaning up the river. It was also a day like today when Naruto was thanking the stars for his bloodline as he nearly destroyed a woman's herb garden thinking they were weeds, and almost fell off the waterfall in the river they were picking trash out of. I just hope what Kakashi Sensei has in store for us tomorrow is as awesome as he says it is, hum, I mean I could, no, he said it was a surprise, but what if it's lame, for the rest of the night, Naruto was contemplating on checking if what Kakashi had in store for them was worth double duty D ranks. In the end, he decided to trust Kakashi this once, but if it was more lame team building exercises, he'd be keeping a much closer eye on Kakashi's plans for them. The next day, a miracle happened. Kakashi wasn't two hours late. No, Kakashi was almost three hours late as he arrived to see three fuming genin glaring at him. Okay okay, just calm down you three, said Kakashi. I promised you I'd teach you something and I will. First, tell me what you know about chakra. Sakura was the first to speak going into a detailed, textbook explanation on what chakra was and how it is used in the ninja world. So Kakashi sensei, what does that have to do with this super cool ninja skill you're going to teach us? Well, 
What I'm going to be teaching you will help you with your chakra. More specifically, using your chakra for jutsus you may cast, said Kakashi. What I'm going to teach you are a few chakra control exercises. So what exactly are these chakra control exercises used for? Asked Naruto, hoping this wasn't another lame team building exercise. Kakashi went into an explanation about how jutsus use chakra and how to optimize the chakra better by learning to control your chakra better. What really got Naruto's attention through was that the better your chakra control was, the easier it would be for you to learn and master jutsus. I'm going to teach you two chakra control exercises that have practical uses amongst ninja. The first of these exercises, which I estimate will take you the rest or the week at least, is tree climbing, said Kakashi. But we already know how to climb trees, sensei, said Naruto. Yes, but can you climb trees without your hands? Asked Kakashi as he did a demonstration on a nearby tree, sticking his feet to the trunk and walking up the tree like nothing. Kakashi let out a slight giggle when he saw the looks on everyone's face. Now, gather your chakra in the bottom of your feet and climb up a tree. This is also something you can do on your own time. You mean while we're waiting for you to help an old lady? Muttered Naruto. What was that? Asked Kakashi, pretending he didn't hear anything. Anyways, this exercise will not only help with chakra control, but if you do this exercise long enough, stamina as well. If you can properly gauge the amount of chakra for this exercise, you can also properly gather the proper amount of chakra for a jutsu. Theoretically, if you can master this exercise, you can potentially master any jutsu. Now, take a kanai and use it to mark your progress up the tree. I suggest getting some momentum and running up the tree first, said Kakashi as he threw three kanai to his team. Right, I'm going to be the first one up to the top of the tree, tt ebeo exclaimed Naruto, receiving a look from Sasuke. Che, like a dobi like you could ever win, retorted Sasuke. The challenge was on. In one motion, all three of them began running at a tree with Naruto taking one step onto the tree before slipping off, not enough chakra. Sasuke on the other hand, had the opposite problem as the tree buckled under his step, too much chakra. Sakura on the other hand, hey, this is pretty easy, chirped Sakura who was sitting atop a very high branch of the tree. What? This exercise was much harder than I thought, but how did she? Asked Sasuke to himself. Hum, so it appears I was right, said Kakashi. Everyone looked to Kakashi for an explanation. Out of the three of you, Sakura has the least amount of chakra, however, as a result she has the greatest degree of chakra control. Kakashi then turned to Sakura. That was exceptionally good for a first try, Sakura. Continue doing that for the time being and it'll help greatly with your stamina. Sakura nodded and smiled at her sensei's praise before Kakashi jumped down from his branch. Naruto, Sasuke, both of you have much larger reserves than her, making it harder for you to control that larger reserve. Keep doing this until you can reach the top and then we'll move on to the next step, instructed Kakashi. Well, I'll leave you all to it. And he just left us, sighed Naruto as Kakashi had done just that left them to themselves. Yup, replied Sasuke. Suddenly, the two locked eyes and were back at it, trying to work their way up the trees. Days passed with Naruto and Sasuke finally managing to reach the top of the tree at the end of the third. Naruto had tried to get an edge on his newly proclaimed rival by using his dojutsu one night to see if he could find the trick in the tree climbing, kind of like he did with the cage bunch and no jutsu. Unfortunately, in his vision he accomplished the exercise by trial and error, without the instruction of the forbidden scroll, which he supposedly saw. Sadly, he was on his own for this one. On the third day of the exercise, Sasuke succeeded in defeating Naruto, but only by one attempt. When Sasuke made it to the top, Naruto followed on the next attempt. This only served to further fire their developing rivalry. As it stood, the score was 1 to 1 with Sasuke winning the tree climbing and Naruto doing better on the bell test. Sakura, who had completed the exercise within the first hours of being assigned it, found it difficult to keep up with her teammates who proved to have superior chakra reserves and stamina. Still, Kakashi had advised her to perform that exercise until the point of exhaustion to build up her stamina and already she was beginning to feel a slight increase in her overall stamina. After their one full day of training, 
they were back to rotating the day between training, which Kakashi was late to, and D ranks. Thankfully with the training, they all had something to practice while waiting two hours for their AWOL sensei. About a week from when they started tree climbing, Kakashi took them out of the trees and towards the stream that flowed through the training ground. I think you three have the hang of tree climbing so I'll move on to the second exercise, water walking. Kakashi gave an explanation that while tree climbing was about maintaining a certain amount of chakra, water walking focused on releasing the chakra at a constant rate. He also gave a quick explanation on the exercise itself. Okay Sakura, you go first. Giving a quick and slightly hesitant nod, Sakura gathered chakra into her feet and began to expel it at a constant rate. Taking her first step onto the water, Sakura slowly shifted her weight onto the surface, hoping it would hold and she would remain dry. Thankfully, as she transferred all of her weight to the foot on the water, she didn't fall in although it was unsteady as she carefully took a few steps out onto the stream. Well what do you know? To get it on the first go, her chakra controls already further than I expected, thought Kakashi. Wow, way to go Sakura-chan! exclaimed Naruto. Even Sasuke had a slight look of surprise and approval on his face. This caused Sakura to blush and to eventually lose her concentration, causing her to plummet into the wet water. As she surfaced, it was pretty easy to tell that the pink-haired Kunoichi was slightly embarrassed. The rest of that week passed with Sakura mastering the exercise within the first day. Naruto and Sasuke both took a few extra days and in the end, like the tree climbing, it was Sasuke edging Naruto out by one attempt. By the end of the second week since they began chakra control exercises, it had been nearly a month since they became Team 7, and it was becoming obvious between Naruto and Sasuke that they were getting more and more irritated by the nature of the D ranks. It came to the end of the day and Naruto was sitting at Ichiraku, enjoying a large bowl of beef ramen when his sensei came and took a seat next to him. I'll have what he's having, only not quite as much, said Kakashi, ordering a bowl. Kakashi sensei, what are you doing here? asked a confused Naruto, who still had noodles in his mouth. Yo, waved Kakashi, I was walking along, contemplating the meaning of life when I suddenly ended up here with no recollection of what I was doing before. Normally, Naruto would have practically strangled the Jonin at his use of another ridiculous excuse, but Naruto's response was slightly different and unexpected. Well of course you ended up here. The meaning of life is to enjoy as much ramen as possible. Kakashi actually got a small laugh out of that. Actually, I'm here to talk to you about, you know what, said Kakashi, grabbing Naruto's interest. I've noticed that you haven't been using that special jutsu of yours recently. I mean, I practice it a bit at home and stuff, but when I'm with the team, I can't really activate it without worrying that Sakura-chan or Tem might find out, replied Naruto. I figured as much. You're not quite sure you want to tell them yet, said Kakashi. I do, but what Hokage Gigi told me, about keeping my ability a secret, replied Naruto. He also mentioned that you should share it with those you work closely with, replied Kakashi. Remember, that's why it was revealed to me, although I would have liked to know before you blew up that log on me. Hey in my defense, a ninja's gotta have his secrets, replied Naruto. True but keeping secrets from your comrades, especially those you trust the most, can also have its downfalls, replied Kakashi. Let me ask you this, do you trust them? Huh, what do you mean? Of course I trust them, replied Naruto almost instantaneously. Sakura-chan, sure she might have not been the nicest person to me back in the academy, but during these past weeks, she's tried to help me out quite a bit with the chakra control exercises. If it wasn't for her, then I wouldn't have gotten them as fast as I could have. I know we had some rough times in the beginning, but we decided to move on. I trusted her not to do what she did on our first day as a team and so far, she seemed to have completely let it go. As for Sasuke, I think I might have actually figured him out. In the academy, I was always jealous of him. All everyone did was talk about how great he was and all the girls went crazy for him, and all he did was ignore them. I just wanted an ounce of the attention he got. But these past few weeks, I've seen it too, I knew a while back that I was going to be the one teaching Sasuke. I have something that the village hopes he will awaken very soon, said Kakashi before he revealed his Sharingan to Naruto. The Sharingan, the Uchiha clan's famed dojutsu, 
I got it as a gift from my friend, Uchiha Obito before he passed away in the war. As it stands, I'm the only one in the village with a Sharingan. Which is why they wanted you to teach Sasuke, right? Asked Naruto. Kakashi nodded. Yes, so I've been keeping an eye on him over the past few years and I've noticed it too. Everyone just seems to throw themselves at him, giving him little gifts and favors, hoping to mooch off the wealth and power of the Uchiha clan when Sasuke finally gets around to reviving it. However, I strongly doubt that's what Sasuke wanted. You on the other hand, have given Sasuke exactly what he wanted, someone to compete against, someone who can push him, someone to call a rival. He's lonely, he's wanted someone to acknowledge him ever since that day. As funny as it sounds, I think I get how he's feeling. Just after hearing that his family was murdered, I remember one day that I was walking along the edge of a river when I saw him, just sitting on a dock. He looked like he could have used someone then who really understood him and now that I think about it, I probably should have just sat down next to him, explained Naruto. I also entrusted both of them with the fact that I have some sort of secret ability and they haven't pressed me on it yet. If Sasuke was even half the arrogant bastard I had originally thought, then he probably would have threatened me to show it. And Sakura hasn't even once pushed the subject either. In fact, you've been the one putting the most pressure on me. Hey, sorry but I honestly think that it's about time for you to come clean. If you do, then this would mean you can actually start practicing with it and getting used to using the future sight in combat, said Kakashi. I'm sure I might even be able to give you some pointers on how to fight when you know what's coming. Huh, how would you do that? Asked Naruto. The Sharingan, if it's been trained enough, the Sharingan can predict the moves of your opponent although not quite to the potential that your ability can, said Kakashi. Really, so that means that if Sasuke gets his Sharingan thingy and the two of us are fighting, we can just look at each other and figure out who's going to win? Naruto asked. Kakashi couldn't help but fall at this faulty conclusion of Naruto's. It wouldn't happen like that, although that would be, interesting to say the least, said Kakashi. I also wanted to tell you one last reason why I think you should tell them sometime soon. I plan on requesting a more difficult mission for us tomorrow, said Kakashi. Really? Is it going to be something more than these stinking chores? Shouted Naruto with a lot of frustration in his voice. Yeah yeah. I'm telling you now because it's obvious that you'd probably just go home and try to look into what mission we have for tomorrow. Kind of like the other day when you borrowed Akamaru to scare Tora, said Kakashi. Hey, that dumb cat had it coming, shrugged Naruto. Kakashi sighed. Anyways, I'm going to request an easier C rank for us tomorrow. It's something that will ease you guys into more appropriate missions for ninja, which means that encounters with hostile enemies are likely, said Kakashi. My one piece of advice when dealing with an enemy is you never know what will happen. But I can just see what they're going to do, said Naruto. That's not what I'm talking about. In order to see what's going to happen, you need to use your eyes. But if you use them, there's a chance that both Sasuke and Sakura could see them and without them knowing about it, could add another variable that you never saw coming until just that moment, said Kakashi. Hum, I see. I think I get what you're saying, said Naruto. I think I'll tell them. After the mission if I don't find a good time to do it during the mission. That sounds fine, and thank you Naruto, replied Kakashi before he got up and left. A little later, Naruto realized that thank you wasn't for agreeing to reveal his bloodline to his team but rather for the bowl of ramen that Kakashi had forgotten to pay for. Okay team 7 your next duty is, either babysitting an elder's grandson, shopping in the neighboring village, or, oh it looks like Tora ran away again. Everyone on team 7 paled when the Hokage mentioned that the infamous Catch Tora mission was back on the rosters. No, 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 I don't want any more lame chores, declared Naruto, making an X with his arms. Hokage Sama. With all due respects, I was actually thinking that my team was ready for a slightly more difficult mission, said Kakashi, stepping forward. Sasuke's head perked up at the mention of a more difficult mission. What? But they've only been genin for maybe a month now. It's usually four to six months before a team is given a C-rank mission, argued Aruka. And in rare cases, maybe two months. Well I think my team's an extremely rare case. Besides, we've foreseen that a simple c rank mission shouldn't pose any problems, said Kakashi, who slightly tilted his head in Naruto's direction, earning a sigh out of Aruka. Are you certain Kakashi? 
asked the Hokage. I am, replied Kakashi. I've done things solo that are much more difficult than AC rank and should in the very rare chance that we get in over our heads, I'll be able to cover for my team. Very well, if you truly believe they are ready, I'll start you out with an easy one, said the Hokage as he sifted through scrolls on his desk. Here we go, I'll give you a low ranked protection mission of a certain individual. Send in the client. What's this? A bunch of super brats called out an obviously drunken older man who smelled strongly of sake and had a pack on his back. Especially the short one with the stupid looking face. Haha, <laughs> who's the shortest one with the stupid face, laughed Naruto. In a matter of seconds, he would regret not looking into this event earlier with his shoraigen. One angered Naruto and a death threat later, I am the super expert bridge builder Tazuna. I expect you to provide me with super protection until I can get back to my country and complete my super bridge exclaimed the old man this guy's about as messed up in the head as that time guy was he says super about as much as time said time thought naruto on their way out of the mission hall team seven ran into team eight careful catch tora is back on the roster naruto said to kiba as all of team eight now paled at the mentioning of that mission i think we'll come back for our mission after lunch said team eight's a john an instructor a red-eyed kunoichi by the name of Yuhi Kurenai. Kiba and Akamaru let out a sigh of relief as they turned to exit the mission hall. All the while, the gaze of a certain young pale-eyed girl not being able to break away from the bright orange object of its desires. As everyone got outside the building, shouting could be heard from the mission hall. Yosh. We will reunite poor Tora-chan with her precious owner before noon or else I'll do 1000 push UPS. And if I cannot do those, then I will do 100 laps around Konoha. Lee. Your youthful spirit burns brightly this fine morning. Guy Sensei. Lee. Everyone. Run. Now, Kakashi warned. The panicked expression on the Jonin's face was enough convincing for everyone to heed his warning. Just as everyone was at a safe distance, a powerful blast of youthful light exploded from the room as a wave of immense passion crashed through the window. Yeah, the mission hall wasn't the most ideal place for an ocean sunset. Wow! This is the first time away from the village, exclaimed Naruto as he frantically took in the sights from just outside the massive wooden gates of Konoha. Pissed! Am I really going to be safe with this brat? asked Tazuna, only serving to irritate Naruto. About ten minutes later, Naruto declaring that he was going to be the best ninja, Tazuna questioning Naruto's abilities, and a few death threats later, Team 7 had departed for Nami no Kuni. On the way to the wave, Kakashi gave a brief explanation of the five great nations and the hidden villages, also explaining how Nami, a smaller island country, didn't have a ninja village. A few hours in their travels passed with the team guarding Tazuna in a formation when just ahead of them, a small puddle came into view. That's odd. What would a puddle be doing here, especially since it hasn't rained in days, thought Kakashi. He brushed the thought to the back of his head for the moment, but looked over towards Naruto who looked to have an almost panicked expression on his face. Upon coming upon that puddle, Naruto's Shoraigen immediately activated, warning him of the dangers ahead, two ninja hiding in the puddle. Naruto immediately looked over to Kakashi, but the Jonin gave him a sign to calm down and that. What was that? Sasuke asked himself in surprise, he had caught the blonde's change in expression followed by a momentary change in his teammate's eye. Sasuke didn't have much more time to think as two clawed ninja wearing masks and headbands of Kirigakir with a slash mark through the headbands. In an instant, they were upon the travelers, wrapping the most experienced in the group up in chains. What? Everyone else's eyes lit up in shock at the events that had just transpired in the blink of an eye. One down. In one quick motion, the two attackers pulled on the chains, shredding Kakashi to pieces. That very moment. Naruto's dojutsu had activated itself out of response of Naruto's troubled situation. Two down, the attacking ninja said before swiping at Naruto with their claws. Frozen, Naruto barely managed to move his hand to block, getting cut in the process before Sasuke could throw a kanai and shuriken to pin their chain to a nearby tree. Kicking the two attackers in the face, Sasuke sent them stumbling back before they released their chain and continued their assault at Tizuna. Sasuke had saved the day but all Naruto had done was frozen at the sight of the attackers. No, there's no way I'm letting Sasuke Teme take all the fun. I can do this, Titi Ibeo. Naruto thought to himself, stealing his resolve. 
there was no way he was going to freeze up like he had done in that vision. The two ninja moved in to attack Naruto, swiping at his head with their claws. Naruto ducked underneath the swipe as the claw passed overhead and Sasuke's kanai and shuriken came sailing through the air, catching the chain and pinning it to the tree. Cage Bunshin no jutsu, exclaimed Naruto, forming a single clone that was squatting just beneath the two ninja. Sasuke kicked the back of their heads as he landed, timing his attack just perfectly with the double uppercut Naruto and his clone had delivered to the two ninja's faces. The two ninja stumbled backwards as Naruto stood up, joined at the side by Sasuke who just sent the blonde a smirk. Sasuke turned his attention back to their attackers, but not before taking in a quick glimpse in the change of Naruto's eyes. They weren't their normal blue and instead had a whitish purple 12 point star in them. Both attackers rushed Naruto and Sasuke before breaking of at blurring speeds as they made their way towards their true target, the bridge builder. Naruto had seen this and moved to intercept the one closest to him. However, Sasuke didn't have the blessing of knowing what would happen and his ninja was the one who made it through their defense. Naruto had managed to delay his attacker for just a moment, but the ninja's speed was still too great for him to deal with and before Naruto could react, both ninja were upon the bridge builder. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.